Welcome back everyone to Wake Up West Texas, 7 a.m. right now, 42 degrees in San Angelo. We're clear, comfortable, no problems, heading out the door. Not a bad looking Thursday morning. We're gonna have a beautiful Thursday as well as a beautiful Friday to end your week. So temperatures out there right now, 41 in Peyton Rock, it's 47 in Brady, 42 in Brownwood, 48 Comanche, that's the warm spot out there, 46 in Eastland and 48 right now in Breckenridge as well. Your school bus forecast, cool and calm, right around 39 degrees at the bus stop. So grab that light, some moderate jacket. It's pretty chilly out there. We'll have lots of sunshine though by the recess hour, right around 60 degrees, and then heading home, mild and comfortable, 64 degrees with lots of sunshine. If you're up in the big country, a little bit cooler, we'll stay in the middle 50s. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for waking up with me. I'm Joe DiCarlo. It is Thursday, January 23rd, 2020. Camille is out for a few days, so I'm flying solo for part of the show. We'll have Lexus Green, though, join us later on in the show in this hour. Here are some national days for you for your Thursday. It is National Pie Day, so grab some pie. Sounds good. And also National Handwriting Day, so perfect your handwriting. I don't have the best handwriting out there. So. Uh, Grab your cup of coffee or whatever you like to drink in the morning. Let's get you started on your morning news. First up, one victim sent to the hospital after being stabbed in San Angelo late yesterday afternoon. Shortly after 4 o'clock, officers responded to the 600 block of Avenue X in San Angelo for the report of a stabbing. Upon arrival, there was one person who had been stabbed at the scene and taken to the hospital for treatment. Police were on the scene with little details at this time. It is very early on into the investigation. We have one victim that has been transported to a nearby hospital for treatment. We will keep you updated on any information on this story. This is still an active investigation. Stay up to date on our website, myfoxzone.com, or always on our free Fox West Texas mobile app. And the city of San Angelo says the public can offer thoughts on a proposed housing development competing for state tax credits during a town hall meeting at 6 p.m. on January 30th at the McNeese Convention Center. Citizens will hear details about the proposed project vying for funding through the state's Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. The Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs makes funding available through tax credits for single and multifamily rental construction projects. Credits are awarded through a competitive process. And a new brewery is coming to San Angelo in the summertime. Plateau Brewing Company, or PBC, will occupy both 212 and 214 South Chadburn Street, with the brew floor being at 212 South Chadburn and the tap room at 214 South Chadburn. The building was built in 1905 and has served as both a deli and a barber shop. Walking into a piece of historic San Angelo, uh, the building that we're in was my great-grandfather's building. It was his restaurant when he immigrated from Greece back in the uh, mid-20th um, century. He settled down in San Angelo and for about 20 years operated a, a restaurant in Delhi in that space. Our beers will be offered year-round, including Coyote Blonde Ale, which is PBC's flagship desert draft and honey mesquite wheat using locally sourced mesquite beans and more additional seasonal beers will be served as well. Plateau Brewing Company will experiment with aging beer in oak barrels for a more complex and experimental taste. And there's a new scam to watch out for. This time it's a texting scam that disguises itself as a delivery notification from companies like Amazon and FedEx according, according to How to Geek. Within the text, there will be a link that takes you to a fake Amazon page that offers you to, to take a, quote, free survey. And it was considered one of the largest data breaches to threaten the private information of Americans affecting nearly half of the U.S. By some estimates, the data breach compromised the personal information of around 147 million people. Federal Trade Commission Chair Joe Simmons was quoted, Equifax failed to take basic steps that may have prevented the breach, end quote. That's all for your local news. And a law that forbade women from smoking in public may have actually helped them step into new, more equal territory. Here's This Week in History. 
Welcome back to This Week in History, the one where it was illegal for women to smoke in New York City. And we answer the question, how did smoking lead to more rights for women in the 20th century? It's no secret that women were second-class citizens in America in the 20th century. I mean, there were all sorts of absurd rules prohibiting women from doing everyday functions across the country. But perhaps no rule backfired so poorly as the Sullivan Ordinance in New York City. This week in 1908, New York signed in the Sullivan Ordinance, which forbid women from smoking in public. It's named after the man who proposed it, Alderman Timothy Little Tim Sullivan. According to reports, Sullivan had admittedly never seen a woman smoke in public, but the mere thought of it repulsed him. Ew! Not long after it went into law, Little Tim's ordinance got its first test. Katie Mulcahy lit up a cigarette in public and was arrested on the spot. She was jailed and fined $5 for the offense of being a woman and smoking in public. When talking to the judge at her court date, Mulcahy said, quote, I've never heard of this new law, and I don't want to hear about it. No man shall dictate to me. The mayor of New York struck down the Sullivan Ordinance not long after that court date. But that particular law had an effect that little Timmy never even contemplated. So the right for women to smoke in public was never written into the law. But not long after the ordinance was struck, the chief legal officer for New York City declared women had the right to smoke in public giving women a legal avenue to do something that men could already do, which only set the standard for more laws to be written in favor of giving women rights. The whole affair just added more fuel to the fire for women's rights across the country. And 11 years later, women not only had the right to smoke, they had the right to vote. And that's all for some of your morning news. We'll have tech news coming up after the break. We're talking about a Fitbit that can detect the flu. Don't want to miss that. We'll also have a weather update as well. Lots of sunshine expected for your Thursday and Friday. Your full forecast coming up. Time right off 7.07. We'll be right back.